What's going on guys? Welcome back. Hope you are doing well. In this module, we're going to be covering async let. So we're going to do a quick overview of what that is. And this is the example that we're going to be working on. We're going to mimic fetching these user stats, as you would see in something like Instagram, where they fetch the amount of posts the user has made, the amount of followers and the amount of people they're following. So we're just going to be doing this as a little sub example. And before we do that and dive into the code, guys, I want to just give you a quick overview of what async let is and what we're going to be using it for. So in Swift concurrency, async let is a powerful construct that allows you to run multiple async operations at the same time and gather their results to use later in your code. So it's a convenient way to handle parallelism, which is a fancy way of saying running tasks at the same time without explicitly creating multiple tasks or managing the life cycle of all of those tasks. So guys, async let essentially allows us to start an asynchronous operation that runs in parallel with the rest of the code in that function. The operation is non-blocking, meaning the rest of the code will continue executing while this asynchronous operation just runs in the background. So this is super powerful, and we're gonna see exactly how we can utilize this in our example, which we're gonna get started with now. And before we hop into the code, guys, the full version of this course, the pro version of this course is available on the website at stephancodes.com in the fundamentals section here. So this is obviously just one of the modules taken from the course that I'm posting on YouTube for free. If you guys want access to the whole thing with a bunch of additional modules and more in-depth explanations and better examples, go ahead and check us out at stephancodes.com. And that is available for a one-time purchase, or you guys can sign up to become a member with us. And for less than a coffee a day, you guys can get access to all of our pro courses and app templates. So that will allow you to sign up for any one of these courses, our pro app clones, our fundamentals. It also gets you access to all of these app templates. We just launched this amazing new design library that you guys will get lifetime access to as well. And guys, the for that low cost a month, you get access to all of this stuff. It unlocks the entire site with the exception of the Pro Plus content. That is a higher tier of content that we just introduced. And if you guys want access to that, you can become a life member to get full unlimited access to everything, including Pro Plus content. So guys, let's go ahead and jump back into the code now and get started with the rest of this module. So first off, guys, let's just create the UI for this. Like I said before, we're not gonna be doing this whole screen. That would be unnecessary. We're just gonna do these little statistic views for the post followers and following. So it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We're gonna have an H stack and we're gonna have three components in there. So that's gonna be these three V stacks. We're gonna say text and here we can say nine and then texts, posts. And guys, we're gonna give this a frame of a width of 100 pixels. Um, and then we're gonna do two more of them. So we can just copy and paste this. And here we can say 20 followers and one following. So we'll say followers and following. So this is our basic UI that we have here, right? Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now what I want us to do guys is create the data model for our stats that we have here. So it's gonna be a pretty simple struct. We're gonna say user stats, and we're gonna say let posts, which is an int, let followers, which is an int, and let following, which is also an int. Okay, so now we have our data model, we have our view. Next up, we are gonna create our view model for this guy. So the view model is going to be responsible, responsible for mimicking or mocking up some sort of API call that's supposed to fetch these stats. So guys, each one of these stats, sorry, is gonna have their own process or task associated with it, right? So we're gonna have to do one to fetch the amount of posts we have, one call, a separate call to fetch our followers and a separate call to fetch our following. So we're gonna have three tasks that we need to run. So I'm gonna show you guys how we could accomplish this with just using tasks. And then I'm gonna show you how we can implement async let to make this process significantly more efficient and faster and optimized overall. So let's go ahead and create our view model, guys. So we're gonna say we want a class and this is going to be async let view model which will be an observable object. And we are going to have a function to fetch our stats. So I'm gonna have a func called fetch stats. And we're not gonna bother with like making a service and stuff here, guys. Um, just for the purposes of this example, we don't really need to. And then we're gonna have three helper functions, guys. We're gonna have a private func 
to fetch our posts. So fetch post count async, and it's going to return an integer. And we're gonna have two more just like this to fetch our followers and following. So I broke these up into helper functions for a reason. We'll see that in just a second. So guys, basically we're just gonna do a quick like sleep here. So we're gonna say this function is gonna take three seconds to get us back our result and we're gonna return nine, right? Just as we see here. And guys, then we can copy and paste these two lines of code here. And let's say this function takes two seconds and this function takes one second, okay? So let's go ahead and return 20 followers and we'll say one following, right? Just to mix our data up a little bit. All right, so how are we going to accomplish fetching all of this data? Well, there's a couple things or a couple ways we could do it, right? And we're gonna start from the worst way or the least efficient way and work our way up to the most efficient with utilizing async let. So here's something that you could absolutely do. You could say, let posts equal await, um, what's it called? Fetch post count. And we need to make our function async here. And then we could say, let followers equal await fetch followers count and let following equal await fetch following count. And then guys, let's imagine we want this to publish our user stats. So we'll publish th this like stat model over to our view and populate our data there. So this is really mimicking what we would be doing in a real application with a, if we had an actual API guys but we're just mocking this up right now. So we're gonna say publish var stats, which is an optional user stats. And then we are going to populate this property with the data we get back from this guy. So let's go ahead and say self.stats equals user stats, posts, followers, following, right? Okay, and this would absolutely work just fine. Let's go ahead and make sure this actually integrates or works with our UI. So really quickly, let's create a state object for our view model guys, async let view model. And here we are gonna say, let's wrap all of this up inside of an if let. So cut these three V stacks guys with command X and say if let stats equals view model dot stats. And here we are going to say interpolate stats dot posts stats.followers, stats.following, oops, following. All right, and now guys, let's imagine we wanna just attach our task of fetching these stats over to, uh, uh, or sorry, to our view with that task modifier. And we can go here and say await view model dot fetch stats. And we'll say here, in an else block, we'll show a progress view. So I want you guys to think about how long this process is gonna take based on how long we're sleeping. It should take six seconds. And let's go ahead and explain why now that we've gotten all the boilerplate stuff out of the way. Well, guys, this function takes three seconds and we are awaiting the result of that, right? So this, is gonna t this creates a suspension point in our code or it blocks the execution of our code here until this process completes. This takes three sec seconds, right? And then this one takes two, and then this one takes one for a total of six seconds, right? And that sucks, right? It's not ideal. We don't wanna take six seconds to do this. So what we can do to avoid having to run one after the other or run them synchronously, if you guys remember that terminology, because that's exactly what's happening here. And I see Beginners with Swift concurrency make this mistake all the time. They think because you are using async await that this process will run sync or asynchronously and it doesn't work like that. Await creates a suspension point in your code and these tasks will all now run synchronously or one after the other to take a total of six seconds. So how do we get around this guys? Well, we could create multiple tasks and run them concurrently or, or at the same time, right? So let's imagine I removed async here and I said, okay, let's wrap each one of these up in a task. So I said, cut task 
boom, do this, and wrap this up in a task, and wrap this up in a task. Okay, well now, all of these are gonna run concurrently, guys, but we have a problem here. Now all of this exists within these task blocks. So we have no way to get them to escape those blocks and ultimately populate our stats here. So even though we have transitioned our code to running these tasks concurrently or in parallel, and it will no longer take six seconds, it would only take three, right? It would only take as long as the longest task or the slowest task to complete instead of adding up all the time to, together to get six seconds. Now these values can't escape these task blocks to ultimately get us what we need. Now we could restructure our code a little bit here to get this method to work, but ultimately this isn't efficient or the best way of doing this for multiple reasons, guys. Like this isn't a scalable approach, right? Like you don't wanna just create an infinite amount of tasks, right? This is pretty simple, but if we had another six or seven properties in here, we don't wanna create like 10 tasks or potentially an infinite amount of tasks. That's gonna overload the system with a bunch of separate tasks to create. So this is where async let is gonna come into play. So guys, let's go ahead and add async back to our code here and let's take these out of these tasks tasks we don't need them and i'm going to show you guys how to use async let to accomplish this so instead of saying let posts equal await fetch post count we are going to say async let posts equal that async let and async let following equal await fetch following count right so this is cool because now because we have this async keyword preceding these values guys we no longer need to await that result from each function call. If we remember from our explanation, async let is a non-blocking operation that will allow the rest of our code to continue its execution. And only once we need these values will we have to await the result of them. So you'll notice we're now getting an error here because we're trying to use these values and ultimately we never said await anywhere. We just said, hey, we're gonna use an async let operation here. So all of these processes will now execute at the same time and our code will continue its execution. But ultimately, when we need to use this stuff, then we're gonna to have to await the result of that. So you guys will notice the compiler is smart enough to fix this for us. This is now what we are gonna be able to say. We're gonna say self.stats equals await user stats and we can wait for those values. So check this out, guys. Let's go ahead and add some print statements here to, so we can see exactly how this is working. And we can see here that it now only took three seconds. Like if I run this again, guys, one, two, three, boom, it's gonna populate right there, right? We can try that again. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and it populates on the button on three seconds with that timing there. You guys can whip out a timer yourselves and do it if you want. So we can see here that that proves that these tasks are running concurrently. It only takes three seconds. So the other two tasks complete um, while this one is running, right? So we've accomplished what we want. I want us to just go ahead and add some print statements here so we can see exactly how this is working. So the first one I'm gonna add is here, guys. We're just gonna say print function started. And the next one I'm gonna add is after the async operations. So we're gonna say function continuing on after async operations. So the next one I'm gonna add is after this guy, where we're gonna say, okay, now we have updated the stats after we actually say self.stats equals await user stats, blah, blah, blah. And I'm also going to add a couple to each fetch function, right? We're really gonna dive deep here, guys. We're gonna say fetching posts. And then after that, we are gonna say got posts. So go here, got posts. And you guys can do this as well. You can type all this out or you can just follow along. Really up to you. Sorry guys, I'm just copy and pasting all this stuff. And then guys, we're gonna say, fetching following and got following, right? Okay, so this is gonna be really interesting and make sure we pay attention to the time of each task. So this is the task we are calling last, but it takes the least amount of time. We are calling this task first, but it takes the most amount of time, okay? So guys, this is a pretty detailed print statements here. It's really gonna give us the flow of execution and give us a better understanding of how this works. Let's just go ahead and now make our async let module the root view of our application by going to our app, going here, 
and running our code so that we can see these print statements coming back in our console. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have, right? Okay, so we are getting this error here. We can fix that in a second, but let's check it out. Let's go back to our code and we'll go to our async let module and we see obviously the first function we get is our function started. But even though these are asynchronous operations, guys, guess what? The very next function we get or the print statement we get is this one right here because now we are not creating that suspension point in our code, right? So the code will just continue executing because of these async let declarations that we have. So we saw before that if we had a wait in here, it would wait for that to complete before going to the next line. Our code now with async let continues its operations, right? And then let's take a look at how the data came back, okay? And we don't really care the order that this stuff comes back in. We just need to get it all and chunk it all together when it all is done coming back, right? So we got following first, right? Because we remember, even though this function is called last, right? It's the one that takes the least amount of time. So we have a race condition here, right? This guy finishes first and then followers because that's the next in line and then posts come back. So even though posts was called first, it is the last value to come back because we have set it up so that takes the longest amount of time. And then ultimately after all of that, guys, we get updated stats. And guys, remember, because we have a wait here, it creates a suspension point in our code here, right? So we won't get this line of code until we get the result back that we are waiting for. So this really, really breaks down the flow of execution here. One more time, guys, we get this back first. It goes through all this stuff, right? But it immediately gives us back this one. And then it gives us all of these async processes start. They come back in whatever order they come in back in. And then we await the result from that. And then we get this type uh, print statement back here. So ultimately, why is this more efficient? Well, it allows all of these processes to run in parallel or at the same time or asynchronously, guys. So instead of taking six seconds, it literally takes half the time and only takes three, which is obviously way more efficient and way faster. So your app, if you had this and someone else didn't, your app would be twice as fast, which would make users want to use your stuff more because you guys are awesome because you are learning from me. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video and really wrap it up for the async mo let module as a whole. This is a super, super powerful uh, tool that we get to use within Swift Concurrency. And you pretty much want to use it anytime you need to run processes like this in parallel. And you don't care about the order that they come back in or they don't necessarily, one task doesn't depend on another. And you can just wait for them to come back in whatever order and use them accordingly. And to get rid of this purple error, guys, if you remember, we can just add main actor to our class here. And just a couple more takeaways before we close we uh, close this module out. Guys, when you use async let, you no longer need the await keyword until you need to actually use the data. So a mistake I see people make is using async let and await in combination with that when you don't need to, okay? So you only need to await the result when you actually need to use the data that you get back from those processes. And once again, this was a more efficient implementation than using a bunch of tasks like this, task, task, blah, 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 because we don't wanna to have to create a bunch of tasks and overload our system when we can accomplish the same thing using async let. So that's gonna wrap it up for this one, guys. In the next one, we're gonna be diving into task groups so that's another advanced Swift concurrency topic and that's gonna be super fun, super exciting. So we'll see you there. Peace.